Welcome to BC Spirits, episode number 9. It should be number 10, and I have to apologize for last week. Everything just got away from me. Um, I know I usually do this once a week. I've had a, two, a week break, or I suppose a two-week break. Um, with school and everything, it was just a lot last week to try and keep up with. A lot of group projects last week, and I apologize to everybody who's been following me, and that I didn't uh, follow through with some uh, uh, an episode. I'm going to get there today. I'm finishing up studying for one of my finals, which is perfect for this episode because we're doing coffee liqueurs. And what could any student want better than coffee is coffee liqueurs. And so I have got, uh, what have I got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven coffee liqueurs. And I'm going to throw a chocolate one in there because I believe it's one of the only creme de cacaos we have in BC. So coffee liqueurs, most people think of sickly sweet, uh, Kahlua and faux sort of things. But the cool thing with BC is obviously we love our coffee. If you've watched any of my episodes whatsoever, you know how much I love my coffee. Uh, shout out to Discovery Coffee. Hey, happy habit. Where else do I go? So many places, so much coffee, so little time. Um, I'm not as much hopped up on coffee as I usually am. It's mid-afternoon, so this is a really perfect time just to get me over the edge tonight. Get me over the edge for study. Um, so let's kick it off straight away. Uh, first up, we have Sherryham's brand new coffee liqueur. I love the guys at Sherryham, and I couldn't even get a bottle of this until today when we did Meet the Makers with Sarah Park from Coastal Beverages. So I had to uh, wait till today to do this episode purely so I could get a bottle of this sucker because I really needed this in my collection for... This episode. So uh, they partner with Stick in the Mud. If you've ever gone to Souk or if you're going to uh, Port Renfrew, Stick in the Mud pretty much the last place for decent coffee all the way to Renfrew. Trust me, I stayed at Renfrew and I drove all the way to Souk to get a coffee from Stick in the Mud. It is the last bastion of coffee salvation and coffee haven in that area of town. So Jason Pate partnered up with uh, Stick in the Mud. They've been around since 2007 to create this. Now the great thing with... Um, Oh, I always do this. I don't open before I start filming. Um, the great thing with the uh, BC coffee liqueurs I'm finding is that they're not sickly sweet, cloying, gross things. They're still very fresh and vibrant coffee. Um, dry finishes, that sort of thing. On the nose straight away. Oh, if you've ever been a stick in the mud, as soon as you put your nose in this, you taste, you smell stick in the mud. Oh, I was lucky enough to taste a couple of test batches of this one. Um, true, to what, true to what I said. Literally like a slightly sweetened, thick pour of espresso um, with vodka added to it. Not that I do that very often, but that's the sort of thing I'm getting. Um, the coffee flavor is there. It comes through really nicely. The hard thing with coffee, I think, with doing liqueurs in BC is that some of our coffee roasters... Uh, roast quite light and so you get a very acidic um, floral citrus that sort of thing and when you do a coffee liqueur you sort of want to try and get a little bit deeper coffee coffee flavor like traditional coffee without using extracts and stuff like that I don't know what he sweetened it with but it's a beautiful like it's not like a simple sweetener but it's not super complex taking over the coffee it works really well with the coffee in a great way that's a good starter. Really light, really light coffee. Like, uh, in a great way though. Like, it's not killing my palate or anything like that. Oh, next up, everybody knows, well, you know what? I, I always say everybody knows my love. Um, Sons of Vancouver, I did a podcast last week on the Post Shift podcast. It was sort of a Post Shift podcast. BC Spirits mashup with James Lester from Sons of Vancouver. This is part of their April Fools. Now, I'm not going to tell you too much about April Fools because you should be listening to my other podcast as well. But his coffee liqueur sucks. <laughs> which is one of their April Fools releases, which I just love. Um, they put out stuff that people don't think can be good. This year was coconut... Uh, sorry, a craft coconut rum made with honey. And people go batshit crazy for it. It's insane. So this is uh, using Moja Coffee, and I was lucky enough to go to uh, Sons of Vancouver and did the podcast with James, and literally you walk through the back uh, the back door, across the alley, and you're at Moja Coffee. It's awesome. <laughs> what 
With this one, you get a little bit more of the spirit forward. Ooh. But on the palette, very different flavor profiles. With with Jason's coffee liqueur from Sherringham, um, a bit more like uh, I don't want to say drip coffee, but like that sort of uh, that sort of extraction, French press drip coffee. This is just espresso shots, like hardcore espresso shots. This on the rocks. This in a cocktail. So far. So next up. Um, we got something kind of cool because I've got a bottle of something that I haven't yet opened and I know I've had it for a, f a little while. Um, so I'm hoping that David doesn't get mad at me. So this one from uh, Wayward. I've done a lot of stuff for Wayward. Um, up in Courtney, in the middle of nowhere. Absolutely amazing products. Gorgeous distillery. Everything's honey based. Um, so they, they sweeten with honey. They don't have any sugar byproducts. This one is uh, done with Royston. So Royston's up in Courtney area. Um, you have to imagine on the island here, we have this sort of like these very interesting, I don't want to say archipelagos because they're islands, but like literally islands of townships where it's like you drive for two hours and you get to Courtney. You drive for two hours back and you're in Nanaimo, but there's nothing really in between. And so it's kind of cool how we've got these little um, cultures around everything like this or oh, on the nose more nutty more nutty uh, coffee the sweetness of the, the honey is still there but definitely much more nutty uh, coffee flavor oh Super deep, chewy mouthfeel. Um, oh, just keeps going on and on and on. Very reminiscent of the, uh, very reminiscent reminiscent of the Sons of Vancouver. The interesting thing with coffee liqueurs is you have to think about like, it's just not coffee thrown into alcohol that sort of thing. It could be cold brewed with alcohol. It could be espresso shots into the alcohol, so on and so forth. So this. So many different, you can imagine all the myriad of ways that you've seen baristas create your coffee in the morning, pour over, espresso, drip, however, like French press, however you want to do it. Now apply that to alcohol, which you can do a multitude of different things. And then you add sweetener and you add a whole bunch of things to that. And so you, the, the flavor profiling is going to be very, very different. So this is the one that I haven't opened. <laughs> I've had it for a few years. It is still sealed. As you can see, I'm going to put it right up to the camera. Never opened. This is a bottle of, bottle number 15 of 258 bottles of rum barrel aged depth charge. So, I'm not even sure if they're making this again. David or anyone from Wayward, if you can comment in the bottom, that would be fantastic. So obviously when they say rum barrel aged, um, their, uh, their rum that they do out of honey. Much more sweet on the nose instead of uh, nutty. Oh, yeah, the tone of the coffee comes down, sweetness of the rum honey comes up. Oh, I apologize that I haven't opened that quit soon enough, David. I promise I'm going to drink that now. So, whew, always got to pace yourself. And when you're doing sweet stuff, it just ruins your palate real quick. So next up, friends, ugh, gotta stop doing this. Always, I never open it up before I tape. And it always makes me look like an absolute tool shed. And I apologize for everybody watching that I can't get this bloody thing open. There we go. So Blasted Brew. Blast of Brew from Narramatta. I think it's the one, only one we have from the Okanagan. Yeah, island, mainland, island, island, Narramatta, Okanagan. I know Pemberton makes one. I reached out to Kyle. I fully apologize that I forgot about the one from uh, the one from uh, Pemberton, and I will make it up to you later. I promise. I'll put it into a, a random liqueur episode. 
So this one comes from uh, Homestead Brewing, which is good friends of the guys from Naramata. Ooh, old school coffee, almost chicory on the nose. Ooh, that's an interesting flavor nose profile. Ooh, but this is like traditional. This is probably the closest one out of these that I've tasted. It's more almost classic, heavy roast sort of coffee profiles. Light, easy drinking, goes a bit more aggressive, balances all out. This is definitely much more almost smoky sort of old school drip coffee. Oh yeah, that one's definitely a keeper. Look how many coffee liqueurs were like, you could basically, I can basically come, everybody should just come over and we'll just do uh, White Russians for days. We'll just dude it up hard. So the next one is an interesting one. I'm not sure how this one's going to turn out. So there's a distillery in Surrey called Dragon Mist. And they're very well known for Baiju. That's sort of what they, they're the Chinese immigrants, so they, they make a lot of Baiju. Um, but they also have made this crazy coffee liqueur. Um, and the hard thing is, is the website doesn't tell you too much about where the roastery is or anything like that. And they don't, they're not really big on, in, on the, uh, Instagram or social media. So you can't really find out a lot of information from that. But, uh, I saw a bottle at the Spinnakers in Vic West. Ooh. I saw a bottle of Spinnakers in Vic West. And, uh, whew. look at the legs on that. That's crazy thick. Interesting nose. Much more, uh, I hate to say Vegemite, but it smells like Vegemite. Now, maybe just because it's in the bottle much. Oh, there we go. You know what that smell is? It's the base alcohol. It's a sort of naturally sweet. I think they use wheat. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure it's wheat. But very sweet, very viscous, uh, brown sugars, like a really, like you take a drip coffee and you add a whole track load of brown sugar, that's sort of where the flavor profile is coming. A little bit of over roasted coffee notes, really dark roast, um, but definitely brown sugars. And yeah, on the nose is that sort of, I, this bottle probably hasn't been opened for a while, so I just opened it today, so it's been in the bottle for a while, it's very... Uh, very baiju -y on the nose. It's very interesting if you like that sort of thing. Um, so next up, oh, it is a Victoria classic. So Moonshine Spirits under Moon Underwater have done a shaft. So a shaft traditionally is basically a white Russian with, uh, oh, was it vodka, Kahlua, and Bailey's added to it, and a shot of espresso. So that's what a shaft is. It's a, it's a Victorian classic. If you don't know what a shaft is, it's not a bad thing. Um, it just means you're not from Victoria. I have bartenders from uh, Vancouver tell me, or, uh, uh, text me all the time going, Hey, what's in a shaft? And, um, but originally it was created in Alberta. Uh, in Alberta. And so even though it's a Victoria classic and a staple, it is a uh, Alberta classic. And unfortunately, you can comment your heart out, but I have proof and I'm right. Um, so this is their shaft mix. Now I've threw this in here. Now this has got a whole bunch of other stuff in it. It uses Ortrud Coffee, which is a, a carbon neutral company here in B in Victoria. Um, I threw it in. It's probably not going to be sweet like a coffee liqueur. It's definitely going to be leaning towards like a, a pre-mixed cocktail shafty sort of thing um, that you pretty much just have to add Bailey's to. But this has got a whole lot more coming on. So there's chocolates, almond extract. It's actually creamy, funnily enough. Maybe it's just the flavor profile that's like getting me that it's got Bailey's in it already. But it's just a creamy liqueur. Yeah, if you love your shafts and you want to entertain at home, entertaining at home should be freaking easy. So this is the sort of thing you should buy for entertaining at home. Well, actually, you should just buy all these coffee liqueurs, make different batches of... Uh, white Russians and see which one tastes better. That's how I should. I think you should do this. It should be a white Russian off, um, which I think would be really cool, actually. 
Okay, last one. And this one is a uh, interesting one because um, I picked this up when I was at uh, Victoria Spirits last. It's a chocolate liqueur. So it's a, a oh, light's really bright. So it's a chocolate liqueur, um, creme de cacao, um, that uses serene chocolates, which I've used in the past. They're husks I love. Uh, I use them a lot at Pagliacci's and other venues. Um, but it's their chocolate liqueur. So I'm curious at, oh yeah. So they use the nibs and the husks. So the husks are outside the nibs and the husks traditionally have been biodegradable. They've been thrown away, they've been composted. Um, but in recent years, everybody sort of started using husks more and more in cooking. I use them in cocktails um, and the husks are super effective and super cheap um, and give you really good flavor profiling. On the nose, you can automatically tell it's got both husks and nibs. Nibs give you a very like chocolate flavor profile, whereas the husks, you give you everything from sweet to, to bitter chocolate. Yeah. Not overly sweet. Not at all. Very dry. Um, very dry. The sweetness is just in the background, but it's not sweet like the other coffee liqueurs we've done today. But if you're going to throw it into a, a uh, Brandy Alexander, use the Victoria Spirits Brandy, this creme de cacao, a little bit of cream, splash of sugar maybe. But oh, I know I say it every episode, everybody. I know I do. And I always say, well, I when I started out doing coffee liqueurs, now I missed Pemberton, so I'm looking down the barrel at like eight coffee liqueurs in BC. Eight. I, I'm, getting, I'm going insane with how many... How, many, how much stuff I have to buy and how much stuff I have to freaking review every single week and it blows my mind thinking like oh I'll have an easy week this week I will do coffee liqueurs and give myself a break and then I end up tasting eight different things so I don't think I'm going to have any more easy weeks I think every week is going to be difficult in the best possible way but um, that was coffee liqueurs if you like your uh, if you like your white Russians which I know you're out there, you like them. I like my I like my black Russians more, sans coke. I just like vodka and Kahlua. Um, definitely go out, track these down, get a bottle for your at-home bar, mix it with some local vodka. Um, maybe should I say Sheridan vodka? Or maybe per se from Ampersand. Slap some freaking coffee liqueur in there. In what? Throw on, uh, throw on the Big Lebowski and enjoy your afternoon. But uh, that's all from me. I have to get back to studying because I have two more finals to do. Um, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you, very everybody, everybody. I appreciate you immensely. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching on Facebook, please comment and say thank you. Um, tell me your thoughts. Tell me what I should be reviewing next. Give me some feedback. Tell me I'm horrible and that I should stop doing it because that'll just make me want to do it more. Um, but thank you very much for the support. I love BC Spirits. You love BC Spirits. We all love BC Spirits. Have a good weekend, guys. Bye.